Welcome to Lamins.com in our lab video series on Cisco Wireless LAN Controller. You can find a complete list of Wireless LAN Controller videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In our last video, we went through an installation of Wireless LAN Controller and ended up using the GUI to initialize both of our controllers. So in this video, we are going to continue our lab by introducing you to the controller web interface and going through some of the menu options. Although we will not go into too much detail, but enough to give you a general feel of the layout of the web interface and where things are located. So what we have currently in terms of the last setup, which is where we left off in the last videos, are two identical setup with the wireless line controllers and APs that has been fully initialized. The controllers are 2504 running version 8.1 with the AP directly attached on port 3. But in this lab, we're just going to be focusing or using the lab set up on the left, which is within this green dotted circle. And hopefully you guys already watched our previous videos with the basic installation. So in that case, you would have already been familiar with the setup. What is new on this diagram is our Cisco Prime Infrastructure Server, the IP of .106 and the VLAN 32, although we're not really gonna do anything with that server. We're just gonna use that IP as part of our basic configuration as we go through the web interface. So I just wanna make you aware of that. and. We still have our Windows 2008 domain controller DNS server and the IP of .40 that we're going to be using as our RDP machine. Before we get started with our lab, the first thing I would like to do here is to have a Windows a test machine, Win7 test one, to be associated to our wireless line controller WLC1. If you remember from the previous video, we have configured controller and the APs to broadcast an SSID call temp WLC1. So that's what we're going to do. Let me bring up that Win7 test one machine with the wireless currently being disconnected. So you can see that there's two SSID, one from the BLC1 and one from the BLC2. So we're going to go ahead and associate our client to the BLC1 with the password or security key of Cisco123. Click OK. And the client should be connected to or associated to the SSID, which gets dropped into management interface that ties to the VLAN 32. So if you look at the IP address, just real quick, the client here should be, I should have obtained the IP from 172.16.32 subnet. Okay, so I close that out. I just want to have at least uh, one client associated so that way when we step through with this dashboard or some of the pages on the web interface, we have something to look at. Actually, let me go ahead and generate some traffic as well, just so that there will be some statistics will show up as we go along. Just going to do basic HTTP to Cisco.com. There you go. Okay, good enough. Close that. Now let me jump over to our Windows 2008 machine that I already have a web browser open and point it to 1.16.32.104, which is our WLC1 controller. I'm going to go ahead and log in with the account. And as you can see, the first page that we dropped into is a network summary page, which is part of the WiseLine controller dashboard. So it depends on what version of the software that you're running. If you're running in a version that's prior to release 8.1, the dashboard may not exist or may look differently. And again, what we have here is our 2504 controller. And actually prior to the version 8.1 with the other controller model, there is actually no dashboard for those controller, but with the release of 8.1, now the dashboard has now become the valuables for some of the major controller platforms. And again, it might not look identical to what we're seeing here. So since this is kind of new, and some of you may not have seen this before. Let's kind of spend some time on this page, starting with the default page that we dropped into here, which is the network summary. So the network summary is contained pretty much the information that you are mostly interested in, which is the first thing you would like to see when you lock here the controller, which is the basic statistic, things like the number of wireless network, the number of associated access point, number of active client, categorized into the 2.4 and 5 gig frequency, rogue APs and clients, and the counts on the interferers again broken up in the frequency. So currently we have a single access point associated. So you can see as first access point by usage, there's currently only one access point. We did not update the name of the access point, still using the AP MAC address as the name. 
The next dashlet, this is basically what it's called, a dashlet, is the operating system. It kind of breaks out for you the list of client operating system. Currently, we just have the Windows 7 test machine associated. That's why the client count is 1 for Windows 7 workstation. And this is just part of the feature called local profiling, okay, where the system trying to figure out the type of client. And the next dashlet you have by default is the application, which is part of the application visibility controller ABC features. That's also enable as part of the controller initialization with the RF optimization best practices. As you can see, that's why we try to generate a little bit of traffic on our client. So we get to see this different type of application that's being captured by the controller. As you can see right there, color blue is HTTP, which is the top listed application here. Okay, then you have the list of clients. And currently there's only one, then it tells you the usage as well. And that's what you have under the network summary. Um, some of the things you can try here is adding or removing dashlets. So for example, if you want to delete a dashlet, you can see there's a little X uh, button that you can click to remove dashlet. And once you click on it, the dashlet will disappear. But you can add it right back by clicking on the add button on the top. And you can see the only dashlet that was available is the client, which is the one we just removed. And you can click on it to add, and then it reappears. Okay, what we can also do is rearranging the dashlet if you want to reposition it. Just kind of click on the dashlet you want and drag them around. All right, the next menu down is access point, which gives you a little bit more information on the access point. Actually, it's more of a general overview, but you see that each of the access point has this information listed under the column. For example, the access point that we have has one client, amount of the data usage, uptime, the channel. I believe this utilization, you kind of have to drag that out a little bit. There you go, channel utilization. Since we are specifically under the 2.4 gigahertz, it's currently using channel one. You can cover, uh, you can have your cursor kind of hovering over and you can see its coverage whole event, interference. 18%, number of broke APs, the MAC address. Okay, same thing if you switch over to the five gig, you can see there's a channel, looks like um, we have the 40 meg bandwidth enable. And you can certainly click into the APs to get even more information. So MAC address, IP address, CDP, which is where the access point is connected to, in this case, connect to our controller on port three model and domain serial number. So basic information that is commonly needed by the user. Now you got a little table of performance summary on the right hand side for each of the frequency. And at the bottom is the list of the associated client. Things like type of operating system, capability, and signal quality. All right, moving on to the next menu, which is client, and it's just uh, giving you the list of clients. Click into it, a little bit more information, top application. Again, HTTP being their number one used application. The rate that the client is currently operating in, here we have a 144 meg client capability of 211N. If the client is CCX capable or compatible, it's also listed out the version for you. and Kind of handy here is also tells you the number of the special stream that the client is using, okay, which is currently two. More information, things like network status, IP address, security policy, QoS. All right, the next menu is AP performance. And it's just a collection of performance graphs, things like the utilization on the AP for both frequency, client load, number of clients, for the top loaded APs, the top interference on the APs, and coverage information. All right, next you have the client performance, which is more statistic on the client itself, things like signal strength, connection rates. So when you look at this, you at least have uh, some rough idea of how your system are operating is what type of clients and how they're performing signal quality and the client connection all right so definitely just spend a little bit more time in your system i'm sure once you have your system fully set up there will be a lot more 
updated than what we have here. So just trying to spend some time to kind of look through and see what uh, page and dashlet are useful to you. And the menu at the bottom, which is one of the important menus, which lists out some of the best practices. Settings has been enabled as part of the control initialization. If you remember from the last videos, we select the RF optimization to be uh, typical and traffic type data. And this is where it listed out what has been enabled as a result of that selection. So here, it looks like there's a total of 27 recommended settings and 21 of those has been implemented by the system. And that's what is being shown as a compliance level. So let's go through some of these things like AVC visibility that's got turned on. As part of that, load balancing is currently not. We can just easily click in to or click on the grayed out plus sign in front of it and hit fix it now if you wish to have that enable. It's as simple as that. Okay, local profiling, I mentioned that where we saw the OS of Windows 7 and that's because it was turned on. And you can even see a further list of optimization by expanding on the plus sign, things like NTP, fast SSID, MDNS gateway, Aronet IE, and the list just keep going down the page. There's another section for security, things like rogue policy that got turned on, as well as the RF management, feature like band select, TPC, coverage hole detection, and clean air. Okay, so if there's some of the features that you would like to enable immediately, then just you can enable it right here because these are the list of the best practices. So let me tell you, let's go ahead and enable load balancing. So let's go ahead and click fix it now. Click OK, and there you go. As that gets fixed, the compliance level goes up, and now we have uh, 22 settings turned on out of 27. Okay, there's not even a need to save that. So that's on the menu we have on the left. Now on the top right hand side, you can perform a quick search whether it's on the AP or the client. Then you have the advanced uh, link. Well, once you click on that, it will take you to the traditional web interface, which you'll go to in a second here. Now on the right hand side of that, you can click on this uh, person's icon and you can change the default landing page if you no longer want to see the dashboard as your default landing page and you can switch over to the monitor summary which would take you back to the legacy web interface. Okay, so you can click on the system information. This is just a quick access to the controller information in case you need that. Things like serial number, software version, IP address, and the license information as well. Okay, then there's a lockout button where you can use the lockout. Right now that we have reviewed pretty much everything on this page right here, let's move forward and go to our controller web interface by clicking on this advanced link. All right, so you can see that once you click on the advanced, it takes you to what may have looked more familiar to you, which is what we have uh, seen and known on the Cisco Wireless LAN controller. And if this happens to be the first time that you have seen this page, you can see there's tons of menus along the top here and under each of those menus, are even more options that will get presented to you on the left-hand side. So what we're gonna to try to do here is to go through all those options and kind of point out what they are used for and uh, where to go if you want to configure certain features, but again, without going into too much detail. And that's because we're gonna have a lot more videos covering each of those features in much greater extent. Okay, and that would be what the remaining videos in this video series is going to be all about, which is covering all those features. So now let's go through each of these menus one by one, starting with the monitor menu. And the default page is the summary page, which is pretty much similar to what we saw on the dashboard, just contain the overall system information. Right here, a section for the controller summary, which is like what we saw a couple seconds ago, a summary of access point, client summary, top application, uh, more recent traps, although this we didn't see this in the dashboard, but you get the idea as far as how similar it looks compared to the dashboard. Okay, next we can click into the access point and just uh, give you additional access point information broken out into the different frequencies. Each of these columns just provide 
various sets of information, things like whether or not it passed all the hours profiles, this clean air is enabled. And on the right hand side, there's this little downward pointing arrow, which you can hover your mounts and select the detail just to get even more radio statistic. Things like VOIP, uh, call status or statistic, um, channel utilization further at the bottom right here. And uh, noise versus channel. So noise floor, interference by channel and the client receive signal strength and the SNR. Okay, so RF related information. Going back, the other options you might have seen is the clean air, which we'll talk about later. If you need clean air information, interference, air quality, you can click on that and this is per APs. Or right, there's actually a completely separate section on Cisco clean air that will list out the interfering devices and air quality report. As you can see, most of the menus will be broken up by frequency. You'll see this throughout the web interface. Okay, BLE beacons. And we'll go into a little bit more detail in the separate clean air video. Just want to point that out and skip. The next is the statistics section. It just contains various statistics where there's on controller as far as the packet sent, received, the type of packets, number of VLANs, uh, maximum support by the system, VLAN use, so on and so forth. Things like AP join, the historical data of the AP that where there has already been joined or attempt to join. Port statistic on the controller. These are the physical ports. I want to go through them all, but get the idea of just statistical information related to the controller. All right. Then you have the CDP information telling you what are connected to the controllers or where the controllers are connected to. Directly connected APs, if you have any. Okay, next uh, menu is Rogue. So this is just going to present you with a list of Rogue devices that's being classified to whether it's friendly, malicious, custom, or has not been classified. As you can see here, since we haven't really done anything other than switching on Rogue detection as part of the best practice, um, you see that all of the neighboring AP sherpa is unclassified. Okay, and again, we'll have a separate Rogue detection videos as well. Okay, modern client, this is the main page where you go to to see the list of associated clients in the controller. And you can click into it on the link that shows us a MAC address to get even more detailed information for that particular client. I guess I should have shown the ABC statistic as well for the client for the last 90 seconds. Right, so you can based on this uh, graphical presentation here, tells what kind of application the client has been using. And on the right hand side, there's again another button that you can click on where there's perform link tests, disable the client or remove the client from the system. In the next menu, you got sleeping clients, which is another feature that's been recently added in order to maintain the client information for the extended period of time, especially the mobile devices that go into a sleep mode. This is the particularly related to a web-based authentication where the client will be maintained in the database and do not have to re-lock in for a certain period of time. All right, next we have the multicast menu. And it's just telling us that the multicast is currently disabled and there's not a whole lot of information that we can see, but otherwise you'll be able to see the multicast stream that goes through the controller. Once you turn on the IGMP snooping and things like that. And we'll look into this in the multicast videos, right? And the next menu is the application WLAN, again, related to the AVC. And then we saw that we have AVC enable on the SSID right now. And that's why it's showing up as enable admin state. The only SSID we have, temp-wlc1. But currently we have no profile configured. All right, but you can click into that and get fuller picture of the application statistic, just like how we saw earlier in the per client basis. This one is per WLAN. And the last menu on this page is local profiling, which again, we have turned on. And this is the ability for the system to figure out the device type. And so far we have a Windows 7 associated. And this is similar to what you, or some of you, if you've dealt with Cisco ICE profiling, 
it's actually followed the same concept, um, but the controller is able to perform local profiling without an external system like Cisco ICE, right? But the end result is the same, which is figuring out the device type. And that's all we have under the monitor menu. You can see there's a lot of information that you can get out of the controller. The next menu option over is debut lands, and this is related to the SSID configuration and anything that's related to creating, modifying, deleting SSID. You can see the menu options on the left is fairly short. The first option is the view land, and this is where you can create the new, disable, enable, or remove. As you can see that we have the SSID created as part of the initialization process called temp-wlc, which is the one that we have our client associated. You can click into it, and it gives you even more configurable options. General option, enable, disable, security, QoS, some of the policy mapping, and some advanced option. And once you get to the video where we start configuring SSID, we'll go through pretty much all of these configurable options. All right, and then right underneath, you have the advanced section, and the only options you have is the AP group, which is the way for you to control how and where the SSID will be utilized. As well, that's which VLAN the client will be dropped into. And it actually gets a little bit more involved than that. And there will be actually a lot more options you can configure. It's just that right now we're looking at the default AP group. There's not a whole lot that you can configure. You see the VLAN here, the AP that you add to AP group, 802.11u, if you do other hotspot type configuration. And that's all we have for the WLANs menu. The next menu over is controller, which is a configuration specific to the WiseLAN controller. Starting off with the general page, which is a general configuration that controls various functions on the controller. Most can be pretty much left at default, but we're going to come back here and adjust some of these when we deal with uh, some of the functions in the later videos. But right off the bat, we see the name of the controller. This is where you can update it. And you can also see the mobility domain name that we have provided during the GUI initialization as well. All right, next we have the inventory, which again, look very similar to what we saw under the system information. So the UID parameters. So this is something that you will need when you need to register or fulfill the access point license on the Cisco website. Okay, so this is where you will come and get those information. Next menu is the interfaces, and these are the page where you can create various type of interfaces while design controller, and we'll go through those interface type more extensively in a separate videos, but just so you know, this is the page where we come in, create interfaces, assign IP address, map to VLANs, and things like that. By default, there is a management interface that was created as part of the setup, as well as the virtual interface, and you probably can recognize the IP from the previous video as well. All right. Next is interface group, which is the more advanced features uh, that helps you deal with a large deployment where you will be able to support a large number of clients on a single SSID and by grouping a VLANs together and have those groups of VLANs support the same SSID. Next is multicast. This is where you will enable multicast globally. And I mentioned IGMP snooping. It's just a the page where you configure it and tell the controller how to handle the multicast traffic. So let's go ahead and enable multicast mode globally and IGMP snooping, which is probably not a bad idea. So let's go ahead and enable those. So as we go through, we're trying to hit some of the low hanging fruit, I guess, the basic configuration that we can quickly configure since we're going to be going through most of these menu options anyway, just like how we're doing it here with the multicast. So click apply. Next is the internal DHCP server. So the, the WiseLine controller can be acting as a DHCP server to give our IPs to the WISE client. And this is where you will configure it. Okay, next we've got mobility management. And this is to provide the communication between multiple controllers if you happen to have a multiple controller type deployment. And this is also where you would configure an integration to the Cisco new converged access technology as well. And we're talking about the 3650, 3850, 4500, SUP8, or the 5760 controllers. Okay, and that's where we'll switch over to 
right here, new mobility, that's what they call it, with the conversion access in parentheses. All right, next we have the port menu, and this is where you configure the physical port settings for the controller. Currently we have three ports enabled and being used. You can see those link status are up, but you can click into it. Uh, some basic port configuration, things like duplex status, enable, disable, or whether or not you want to enable link trap. All right, next is the page where you can add the NTP server, which we did as part of the setup. I was currently pointing to our switch one loopback interface. Always uh, recommend it to have this configured, if not already. Next is to enable or disable CDP protocols, uh, versions, and some basic parameter timeout and interval. And hopefully you guys are already familiar with the CDP. So, Tunneling, I believe this is something new on version 8.1. So if this is the first time for you to run 8.1 or later, you see this menu shows up and it's just the ability to tunnel traffic from the SSID to some remote Ethernet over GRE gateway. Okay, so it's just a way to tunnel your client traffic even further into, uh, I guess, somewhere else, a different point of termination in the network. Very Probably very similar to the way the anchor work, but this one, it works with uh, another device that's capable of Ethernet over GRE. All right, and then you have the IPv6 parameters. If you happen to have IPv6 environment or wants to test that out, some of the basic parameters you can go through. Next is MDNS, which is the ability to provide or assist network services based on MDNS, such as the Apple Bonjour. If you have those services in your network and you'd like to support, then you need to enable MDNS. Okay, then we get to the advanced menu, things like DHCP, proxy, Gives you the ability to turn on and off the DHCP proxy and anything related to DHCP that we've seen so far, we'll have a separate dedicated video talking about the DHCP functionality on the controller. All right, and the last menu option here is the master controller mode, and we will talk about master controller mode checkbox in the video about AP registration. And that's all we have under the controller menu.